largely technical talk also on layer 2 UX design patterns I should have added. <laughs> a lot of people thought it's uh, about uh, development, but it's about design actually. So how many of you are actually familiar with layer 2 technologies? Know how plasma state channels work? How many don't? Okay, a few. We will have a tiny, tiny primer about that so that you can get up to speed. So, uh, on the agenda, uh, I will give a tiny detail about uh, precedent for the framework of how we went out and found these principles, tiny principles. Uh, uh, the primer on layer 2 technology so that uh, those that don't know understand what we're talking about. And then there are these layer 2 design patterns, very, very little and few patterns because uh, there's uh, uh, not been much time to test with real users. I could test only with you, we'll, we'll tell you about that, and a summary of the insight. And of course, in the middle, is it going? Yeah, it's going. Okay. We will have the voices of the users. Okay, there's these bubbles of uh, uh, things that people and users actually told me. I've interviewed uh, non crypto users, but crypto curious users also and they will be speaking in the middle of the presentation so that you can hear the voices as well. So last year we presented this uh, Web3 design decision-making framework. It was a tool that came out from the interviews of many different companies in the space uh, that helped us map the different problems users have into different types of buckets, uh, questions that were fundamental to decentralization, and uh, things that are related to the technicalities of the blockchain. This is interesting because it leads to how we found uh, the design patterns and also why we started doing the layer 2 design patterns. So what we found out is that of course there is uh, new mental models and there are, uh, there are also new complicated concepts and these fit in different things. And the solutions that these companies were using uh, range into different buckets as well. If you want things that you could hide, you should hide to the user. And uh, things that are technical, you should, oh, and you cannot hide, you should explain better. I'm not going through the whole presentation that was last year, but uh, just a simple example to understand, like gas is a, a multi-dimensional problem, you can't have uh, things that you can hide away, like what is gas, gas price, gas limit. Designers and uh, projects have had a lot of success in hiding this information. But there are other things like uh, why is there a price at all? Who is it getting it? That you need to find better uh, uh, explainers for this. And these uh, happen also in the layer two. And of course, the solutions these companies were using uh, could be mapped out in here, and so this is where the layer 2 comes in, which is there was a high degree of consensus among developers and designers uh, in working in this space that sometimes it's okay to have a server, a tiny server that helps you in the middle, that uh, there is a degree of centralization, especially for newcomers, for uh, non-crypto users. Okay, It's okay to help them by the hand and then onboard them onto real decentralized technology. And so this is why uh, I thought that layer 2 had that promise of bringing uh, that degree of centralization, but it still has the security of layer 1. So right now a primer on state channels and on plasma. And state channels, they all basically were more or less the same thing. You have layer 1 technology, the blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain, where you have a smart contract you drop in or you lock in uh, some tokens, some ether, okay? And anything can happen off-chain, either in the case of state channels, these are like normal server transactions where two parties, Alice and Bob, sign each other messages and so you are constantly like messaging each other the new state and you agree on that state. It's always the last state and Whenever you want to withdraw, you go back to layer one, and there is where the security comes in through a challenge period. Maybe this guy wants to cheat, uh, but this guy here has the last state, and so it's mathematically provable that this guy will win. The layer one security ensures that anything that happens off chain is secure. Okay, and there is peer to peer networks like uh, I'm me connected with. Uh, uh, Alberto, right? <laughs> or through hubs, intermediaries if you want, where a lot of users are connected together. Okay? 
plasma is a little bit different, but has the same concept. You have the main layer one chain where you have a contract. You deposit uh, tokens on either in there as well. And what happens off chain is actually another chain, but that has uh, a faster throughput. Uh, they have um, less validators. There's uh, uh, you can have like. 2,000 transactions per second, more or less here, and you're committing periodically every 32 uh, seconds, more or less? Blocks. Minutes. Blocks. Blocks, 32 blocks, thank you. And you're committing uh, that state into the chain. So this is the difference between state channels and uh, plasma, which is in Plasma, you need periodically to send transactions on chain and to register information. In state channels, you don't. And they are called optimistic layers, if you want, because you don't resort to layer one until uh, you actually need it. If, if we are behaving well, you don't need to go on layer one. Well, Plasma does this thing, but uh, if only in the case we are behaving badly, you go on to layer one. And sidechains, maybe you have heard of this thing, sidechains are not layer two, we'll talk about that is basically a, an atomic swap, swap between two different chains. So there's Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever, we deposit one token and it's minted on the other side, but uh, I'm not going to talk about this because sidechains are not layer two. And actually right now there's another talk somewhere downstairs exactly about this, side, no, side by this guy. Uh, so if you hear, sidechains are not layer two. And okay, uh, said this, I need to speed up. Uh, we did interview people in the space and users. I want, my mission is to onboard my mother and my brother, okay? And so I try to talk to non-crypto users. Only few of them, five of them, because there wasn't much time with people uh, releasing stuff right before that one to actually have something in our hands to test with. There's Three main moments in the design or the user flow, okay, you need to enter the system, you need to use the system and exit the system. And in these two cases, you also have uh, two side things, which is, normally you would think of transactions, but transactions are, is a pattern that uh, works inside of uh, wallets or when you transact value. But in this case, you can also transact state of applications, you know. Uh, so you should not call them transactions, if you want. And the exit has two patterns, which is I'm exiting fine, I'm friends with my friend, and I just go fine, or adversarial. And entering the system. So, unfortunately today, this is a problem. You still need to go through layer one to get into layer two, and so everybody is still presenting uh, with hey, save your key, back up your wallet, so my dream was shattered right at the first step, you know? Yes, we can onboard non-crypto users. No, not yet. And, uh, of course, there is a solution for this. Of course, the question is, what the fuck is a key? Okay, this is a literal question my users ask. And uh, uh, this solution is, of course, to use contract-based accounts, universal logins, you might have heard of those. Those solve that onboarding process, please start using contract-based accounts, everybody. Then, there are so many accounts, in some cases you need to have your Ethereum key, your, your normal Ethereum wallet, then a contract-based account, and in some cases you need to have your own pillar or your own sidechain, state, state channel or plasma card, like if it was a bank account, if you want. So, these are like three wallets and people, of course, ask, why do we need another wallet? No, seriously, why do I need another wallet? They repeat this thing, they know they have to do this step, but they don't grasp the meaning. And, and wallets today don't make the effort to explain what are these things. And, of course, if you can, just onboard them directly here, abstracting this information and uh, getting them directly onto uh, layer 2 if you want. Or explain if you want what is one wallet, why do I need another wallet, etc. Pick a token. This is a problem. State channels and all the plasma say, hey, you can onboard with any token, deposit any token. So a new user goes there and sees which one do I choose? And there's a lot of things called ETH, 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 ETH. And this is one of the questions they have, like, which one do I pick, you know? Uh, well, what the fuck is a token also is one of the questions. 
and uh, which one should I pick? And uh, what am I paying this to? Yeah, so they have no clue of why exactly they're doing this and why they're voting on these wallets. So pattern here is give optionality, uh, new users simplify, just give one option, maybe die or whatever, we'll talk about that. And expert, yes, you can expand and choose your own, always be there. And hide options until exit, maybe you decide when you exit what token do you want, etc. Et and explain better the difference. This was one of the solutions from the previous framework that works. Then what's your language is yet another pattern that all these people start using developer lingo. Okay, these words don't mean anything and deploy doesn't mean divide. This is an actual question a user had. So deploy layer two, layer one doesn't mean anything at all for users. So experimental layer two, yes, it's experimental, it's internal for us, but not good for uh, non-crypto users yet. So simplify the language, hide the technical complexity if possible, which was a solution from the framework we said earlier on. Then using the system, we're on step two, and uh, right now this is not a die. Okay, this is one of the biggest uh, insights, if you want, of the uh, of this research. They were very confused because these wallets, there's different type of wallets in state channels, in plasma, etc. They all use DAI, but when you are inside of these networks. The die of network one is not the die of network two, is not the die of the main chain. So my users actually try to send each other die from a state channel, from the layer one wallet, or to another uh, state channel wallet. And they did not understand why they were not the same die. And there's no sign whatsoever in these softwares already that these is a custom die, if you want. So, uh, let me try to send it to a friend, okay? Uh, this is one of the insights that we are multiplying the complexity, not simplifying it, unfortunately. And so, solutions here is, of course, like, uh, it was written in the design principles a very long time ago, define or explain what the network you are using. You need to be transparent about that, or, you make it interoperable. This is a, an invitation for all the layer two and, uh, developers to talk together and say, hey, yes, we can call it die. If somebody tries to send it to someone else, we should, behind the curtains, be converting and onboarding it onto the other network and, or work together somehow. And better naming, of course, because of this problem here, the many tokens, okay, if, 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 if. Maybe they should be called Dai State Channel 1, Dai Plasma 1, etc. So, that, uh, so also because they could find each other better. But, you know, uh, so this is not a Dai. And what else? Multiple transactions. This I'll go very fast of it. Uh, there is uh, the idea that transactions go very fast, but in the case of uh, Plasma, you still need to have nonces and wait for a transaction to, to be there. And uh, Plasma has the problem that the finality of that transaction is not instant. In state channel, it's instant. As soon as you receive it, that's it. Uh, in Plasma, you need to wait that this information is actually put the 32 block later, but you can assume that everything goes well. But there is a problem of timing in there. And there's a new pattern emerging of using state channels inside a plasma channel, which is an open question, how that works, how that will work for the users, open question. And for me personally, I think that we should find a technical solution to overcome transaction sequentiality. The nonces have confused a lot of users uh, that uh, they needed to wait until one transaction came back or that has fucked a lot of users in the past. And doubt about using, uh, like there's generic problems like you have onboarded but then you don't offer the next thing, there's a user like saying what do I do now, um, and also it said free but I continuously see different transaction fees and I, they don't understand what these transaction fees are, so you need to be wary of using the right words because this is actually, I said, what the fuck, it said free, but it's uh, worse than monopoly, they are screwing me at every step we make. So this was actual uh, comments that we had. 
very uh, snarky users. <laughs> and design the user's next step, this is basic behavioral design, uh, it doesn't pertain to uh, layer 2, uh, and don't say free or don't say layer 1, watch your language again, etc. Open questions, uh, this is because not much could be used yet, again, there is this idea of agreements. In state channels, when you enter a channel with someone, okay, you are making an agreement about when the exit will happen, how long it will take, okay? So this agreement is a new pattern, okay? There is not yet anything that we could test. I personally think that we should make them uh, flexible and dependent on the amount of balance that you are exiting. If you are exiting one coffee value, you simply uh, do it right away or it's two minutes or whatever. If you are exiting $200 or $1,000, maybe that time span expands uh, flexibly. Right now it's fixed, so that's one of the things that I think they need to work on. And how are we going to manage many open channels? Because if it's peer-to-peer, -peer, theoretically, I could have a channel with each of you. In my wallet, I would have like ch -ch -ch -ch, thousands of lines. Or if I have a hub, I would have the hub with a thousand of lines with the people I might have connections with. The apps would be installed in my wallet. And this is good to hear that also uh, MetaMask yesterday uh, introduced the fact that they have these plugins ideas that uh, you will have apps inside of your uh, wallet to, to manage. And yeah, you need to differentiate these things. And yeah, how state channels inside of Plasma will work, we have no clue. Uh, and hide as much as possible, interoperate, this is what these solutions probably are. And exiting the system, this is the science fiction-y because right now it's only ideas, there's nothing implemented. Uh, the only company that had designed something is Seller, it's a game actually, Seller X, where they did a good job in calling it court mode, okay? So they use that nice language to explain that there is a challenge happening and uh, how, how it works. And so this idea of uh, exiting that you could have uh, challenges happening, okay, it has a requirement on the technology that you as a user need to be looking all the time at the chain. And this is a no-go for UX, so there are people coming out with watchtowers, these are uh, the name, uh, one of the companies called Pisa is developing the watchtowers, and, uh, and, and so this is one of the unknowns, how this part will behave, you know, for, from the user perspective. My opinion is users won't need to worry too much about the challenge, if you can hide it, there's a consensus, or there's three different approaches right now, either the app itself watches the chain for you, so if you connect every once a week or whatever, it solves it automatically for you, if uh, you or they have buy the service of a watchtower, so it's a service that is looking and it's going to say, hey, you have a problem, I'll send you a notification on your mobile phone about this state. Or uh, DAOs among the people participating in this channel saying that company product or user is being malicious, I'll, uh, I'll kick him out uh, and simply offset the pricing for the user in case. In Plasma you are also, you have also these multiple fees to exiting, okay? Since in Plasma right now one of the constructs is to have two weeks or one week when you actually exit before you can get your money, okay? There are people that are creating crypto economic finality, so there are services that say, hey, you as a user, you don't want to wait one week. So let me take your risk. I'll buy your one, your ether within one week for a 1% fee or for a 2% fee. So there are services that are going to gather a fee for you to recover your money right away. A user wants to recover the money right away. And this is the ideal solution. This is why I'm not totally convinced about the plasma uh, construct, especially from a user perspective, but those are solutions that are occurring, coming. And so you see there's a more complexity still rather than less, which uh, was uh, my, my hope. 
And in general, in the whole space and in layer 2 space as well, we need to balance or explain better this idea between cost and responsibility, okay? And in layer 2, it's becoming more apparent, okay? You can have more cost or less cost, sorry, be cheaper, the transaction, if you as a user take more responsibility on waiting, doing watching, uh, waiting the exit, etc. Or if you want the convenience, it's going to be more expensive, but it's more convenient. So uh, this is something that is unsolved today, I think, in the whole ecosystem, and especially in later. I'm done. I have one more slide. I'm done. <laughs> so this is the summary. Basically, uh, try to interoperate so that people are not confused with this multiple kind of tokens. Try to hide as much of the technological uh, methodologies behind, okay, and make it simpler to the user. Use universal login type of wallets or contract based wallets or accounts so that users don't need to store private keys, etc. And we simplify that initial step. And uh, maybe we have something to onboard my mother and my brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>